Hey everybody and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about the latest news in the world of Noodle. Now I'm going to present the whole situation over again because whether you are in one of our discords and you've seen the updates or whether you're discovering this video because you've been searching for Noodle and this is the first time you've heard about it, I want to give everybody a level playing field so let's just talk very briefly about what has happened in the world of Noodle over the last year or so. So Noodle is a low code open source app builder for building mobile and web applications. It builds applications in a local environment um, and deploys when deployed runs like a React app. It uses a special runtime in the browser to translate your low code creation uh, into a fully functioning React web application. So that's why it works really well for desktop applications and mobile applications um, and that is Noodle in a nutshell. Noodle, the company, shut down its operations uh, last year. And since then, was it last year? Was it this year? This year. Shut down its operations this year. And since then, we have, as a community, the people who were using Noodle, which was not a big community, so that's why it's been quite a slow start, but the small community of users like me who actually use it for their jobs and providing apps for clients and for myself. We took it upon ourselves to organize and try to keep the Noodle dream alive. So there were two main forks that happened, forks being a copy of the original open source application. And the first fork was Fluxcape, which is run by um, a team of people, including ex Noodlers. So uh, it's a great project where they've had financing to be able to uh, progress the Noodle code base and make some important updates um, to the code base to make it more stable and to make the editor uh, nicer to use. And they are going down the path of um, a for-profit project. So it, it is still community-based. They have a Discord and it's um, a community project. It is an open source project, fully open source. But they also have some parts of their business that are closed source that they're using for, um, for example, cloud hosting. So they've got a really nice integrated managed hosting system where if you use the Fluxcape editor and the Fluxcape backend, which is paid and closed source, then you can um, have your project deployed really easily from the editor. It's just a one-click deploy and um, manage your backend and your front end from directly from within the Noodle editor, the Fluxcape editor, sorry and the Fluxcape dashboard, which they have, which I've tried and it's great, it works really well. So that's one direction if you want the safety and security of what we had before when the Noodle company was operating a similar service with um, backend hosting and front-end hosting. The other fork, which is the one that I'm involved in, is um, the Low Code Foundation, which is a non-profit association set up in France. Um, so we're a fully uh, registered official legal entity with a business number and a nonprofit association number um, registered with the French government and um, able to operate internationally. So we'll be opening very shortly uh, membership so you can become a member of the foundation, uh, be able to participate in meetings and vote on the future of the community project and um, therefore be able to vote on the future of Open Noodle, which is our uh, fork of noodle where we have so far we've been coasting off the updates that have been done to fluxcape thanks thankfully it's a open source project so we can also benefit from the updates that they've been doing um, but we're hoping to open up to membership so that we can get our own funds and hire our own developers and do marketing and community growth and all those kind of things that will help uh, noodle to become a vibrant community and make it a tool that uh, you can be very confident building your next big app project with. So keep your eyes open for communication from the Loco Foundation. I'll be sending out an email today. If you're a member of learnnoodle.com, which is also run by the Loco Foundation, a um, free uh, open website for people to get starter information, to get started on Open Noodle or Fluxcape. Um, I'll be sending out an email to the mailing list today with information on how to sign up to the nonprofit and uh, get involved in the future of our fork, like I said, which is called Open Noodle. So Open Noodle will remain as open source and as community driven as possible. 
at the moment it's mostly me doing the work on open noodle not by choice and i'm really looking forward to getting people involved and getting help on this project um where it will stay open it will st there'll be no there'll be a lot less help a lot less managed services there'll be no managed services there'll be no um integrations directly with other things it'll just be um the pure noodle so a front-end builder that you can connect to any back end you want you can host it anywhere you want and we'll give help and advice on how to do that and also give um sandbox hosting to get you started so um that's something we'll have a look at today how to get your first uh, back end um, for testing things out on open noodle hosting so this is not a super amazing paid service this is just something for getting you started and um, getting your first cloud backend up there so that you can test your app um, deployed in the cloud and make sure that it's ready to go for user testing and once you're done with user testing then you can export what's in here or we'll help you to export what's in here into um, your own paid hosting somewhere like aws or wherever you prefer and um, you can then go to scale with the same architecture um, open noodle hosting is based on either the original noodle cloud service which is uh, parse as a backend um, using uh, noodle specific cloud functions which you'll find when you open your first noodle project you'll see that there are uh, there's a cloud functions panel and so this these cloud functions are specifically to be used only with the original noodle cloud service though the original noodle cloud service and our noodle cloud service has not been updated for a long time so you might it might not be the safest option for scaling um, i would recommend going with the noodle better backend which is the low code foundation creation uh, where we have uh, the latest version of parse server the latest version of parse dashboard as well to give you some extra features and n8n for cloud functions so this is what i wanted to talk about today is uh, why did we choose these um, services parse server because um, with the noodle better backend you can still connect in the cloud services by using the um, links here so using the endpoint and using the app id and the master key to connect to that cloud service and use it in your editor and there you go so um it still has the exact same interface exact same dashboard as with a standard uh, noodle backend noodle cloud service backend but you're actually using the most up-to-date and um, non-modified let's say vanilla version of parse server um, and you also have parse dashboard and why parse dashboard because um, it gives you a lot of features that were not intent were not available in the original um, noodle version that well in in theory were available and with fluxcape they're making some of those things available um, so that's worth checking out there i know that fluxcape are doing cloud triggers i think uh, which we can do similarly in here if we open up our app that's running on the server we have webhooks so uh, this is a, a feature that's not available on the standard noodle editor dashboard for the back end webhooks can be um, linked up via um, functions if you have the ability to do that we can talk about that in in the future but right now the functions are not open or available um but the most interesting would be like before delete after delete before save after save it means that if you have a new record created somewhere so let's say just i don't have any tables so let's say the user table when a new user is created we're going to send out a webhook to and let's say that it's going to be um an n8n endpoint so you're going to have a cloud function somewhere that uh and, and if you want whatever you want but um, it could be in the the same simple um open noodle hosting the end end endpoint and say that that's a webhook that means that every time a new user is created that webhook gets called with the user data that was just created so that could be you want to send a welcome email and you want it to happen from the database instead of running an email call from your app from the front end then you can have that run from the back end so you're using an email provider and the call takes like several seconds to respond and so you don't want people waiting or like the possibility of that call getting cut up cut short in the front end if the person closes the browser or something like that then you could get that to happen in the back end and every time a user is created it will send that user's details to your endpoint um, and uh, you can have it react whatever way you want so that's something i found really useful 
um, and also the um, config and everything else is still there but an API console this is going to be really important for the next thing I'm going to show you which is the next part of the um, new hosting that we have available is the n n part so let's have a look at that so uh, n n for example here I have a test workflow set up for you to have a look at um, where I'm going to be receiving a call from so let's say this is the webhook I'm going to receive so I'm going to put that endpoint into my parse dashboard um, and then it's going to send over a new user to that endpoint say I want to check to see did the user um, was the user assigned to a company or something like that then I'm going to want to make a call to my parse uh, server from n8n because uh, unfortunately n8n doesn't have any integrated nodes for parse but it's not really a big deal because um, parse is really uh, quite simple and you'll see that by saying okay how would I do a call to um, let's have a look at this one for example how would I do a call to the company table well I'm going to go and uh, test it out here in the API console so we'll do a rest test where we're going to get for example something like classes slash uh, company say we have a company class in here somewhere now we don't need the master key if, maybe we do if we want to use the master key to, to bypass access control rules so say this is in a this is a back-end server workflow so we don't really care if we're bypassing um, class level permissions or access control lists um, or we say no we actually want this to be specifically for the user so we're going to like fake log the user in and then do the call for something like that it depends on what you want um, do we want to run it as a specific user so again that's where we pretend to be that user to make the call um, and what query parameters do we want and you can look up the guide to see how to structure the parameters and then it's going to give you the results so you can send query get the results and you can even export this once it works you could export it to curl and then you could import that here import curl so you could actually test it in the dashboard first make sure that it works the way you want it to and then bring it into any end knowing that it will work exactly the way it was supposed to um, from here and of course including your um, application ID and master key so this is how at the moment I'm building my apps not using the cloud functions and noodle which you might find strange because they're so useful um, they have all of the, the integrated nodes in there for checking data and, and querying the database. But I can tell you that using N8N has been a dream in terms of logging, where you can see all the different executions that have happened of your uh, workflow, and you can get to see all the different data that's been coming out. You get to test the workflow and watch it trigger each node and check the output of each node. Um, so it's been, it's, it's really, for, for me, it's the tool, the open source tool for workflow creation. And that's why I included it in um, the Open Noodle hosting packages. So I hope that gives you an idea of how um, we are proposing that you start your app in a super simple way. Um, yeah, okay, you have to learn a new tool. That might suck, but you'd be surprised how similar it is, I think, to, to Noodle once you get your head around it. Um, and finally, if you're worried about then, okay, well, how do I connect that up from my front end if I want to make calls from my front end? If you check the, oh, I was already in it. If you check the Noodle starter template, then you'll see that in the global logic component section, there is an N8N folder and it has an N8N template. So let's say you want from, from login, we need to check to see if the user, I don't know, whatever, has uh, already been logged in before today or they've logged in too many times or something like that. So we're going to go to the login page and let's say that the login button, wherever that is here, is going to trigger an N8N workflow. Um, so we're going to stick N8N template down there. And yeah, so within the N8N template, what I'm going to do is not use the original template. Sorry, my bad. I'm going to clone the template and I'm going to call it check user details or something like that. Just any, any random thing. Put that just in the, the main file, check user details. And then within here, it's, there's instructions, but just to show you, um, what we're trying to do is um, send an object to N8N and it'll come through on the N8N side as the body of the webhook. So you'll be able to access it anywhere as webhook, JSON, body, user ID, for example. So let's say we need the user ID. Let's delete all this stuff. And we'll do user ID. 
and we'll delete these things. Oops, no, we can't. We're going to disconnect them. And then we're going to write user ID here. I'm going to connect that up to the object. And then we just need to run, um, put some details in here about what where it's going to go for any end. So we need to add in, and you could do this in the template. Maybe the easiest would have been if I'd done this in the template and then just copied it over so you would have the same address every time. So the root domain is going to be whatever your um, NADN domain is from Open Noodle Hosting. And then the webhook ID is going to be here. Oops, no, it's not. Um, it's going to be here. So there's the path, there's the webhook ID. You can see it's like your address slash webhook test slash the ID. And so you don't need to worry about the test part. If you want to test it, then have this checked. And if you don't want to test it, have it unchecked. So we can have a look and see what that looks like just for fun. Uh, this is a post. Okay, so we're going to do a webhook test, test that out. It's going to fail, obviously, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to say that when the person logs in, Where's my, oh yeah, we haven't put it down yet. So check user details. This is the clone of that template that I showed you. I'm gonna put another button just for fun. I'll delete all the stuff afterwards. And do and check. So we're gonna click that freaky check button. Does it call the NADN, passes through the object with no user ID at the moment. Oh, I should have passed in a user ID, I'm so silly. Let's just put in some random string. Okay. So, put that in there. And we've got our NADN endpoint is correct. Ah, don't slash, no slash. And the webhook ID is good. And then we're gonna post that check. There we go. So that came straight through to the NADN endpoint. And we can have a look and see what actually came through. So we can have a look at the table. It's an easy way to look at it or just in JSON if you prefer that. And we can see body, we have user ID, some user, and then there's a workflow ID that's come through as well. So that's uh, how we get it started. You can see all the metadata about the, the call as well. And then with that schema, you can use these values anywhere you want in uh, in the NADN workflow to build the workflow. So I can use what I found, what I got for the user ID. I can stick that in any field I want and use that as data in future uh, workflow steps. So um, this is the fundamental of how we do things in um, NADN, but you can see how the template makes it super easy because no matter what you're doing, you just have to populate that object with a copy of the template with whatever data you need and that's going to pass it through to the correct endpoint and um, whether it's test to test it out or you uncheck that if you want it just to send to the production endpoint um, and that makes it all very easy so that is um, open noodle running the noodle starter template using the n8n prefab for running um, open noodle hosting n8n uh, endpoints and using parse server and parse dashboard. So I think we've covered everything and that would be how you would, that's just a kind of preview as well of how you would set up a, a Noodle um, project from first principles going from downloading the template, which you can get from the GitHub repo, uh, starter template, oops. Oh, my keyboard has changed to American. Uh, yeah. So go to the Noodle starter template, which is linked in learnnoodle.com, uh, or I think in the email with the beginner stuff, and download the zip, and that will be your Noodle project. So just open it up, and you can rename everything and get started with that as a as a Noodle project. Um, then go to the Open Noodle hosting, sign yourself up. Everybody gets two free backends, so you can have. Um, one better backend and one cloud service to test it out if you feel like it. And uh, and then just, yeah, get cracking, get learning N8N and uh, get started making your app. So I hope that's cleared up where we're at with Noodle today, that Noodle is still a viable tool. It's great for building desktop apps as much as mobile apps. I'm currently working on an app that will be deployed with Capacitor and it's just great because the Noodle service is uh, embedded into 
the capacitor app so it's not actually loading a web page from the internet like it would with something like bubble for example it really is loading up the noodle runtime and everything packaged into the capacitor app into the person's phone um, it's only making a call to the internet when it's trying to call the back end like any other app so um, it's a fantastic solution for building web apps as well for mobile apps as well and um, you can see that with the low code foundation and, and open noodle hosting we're trying our best to welcome people into the noodle community and uh, hopefully we can grow and get everybody get more experts on the team and um, more training and organized and uh, really get this this wave of new app builders going so that we have a, re a real credible alternative to tools like Bubble or WeWeb um, where it's fully open source and fully community managed and community driven. The next WordPress, if I could be so bold and I would love to see if anyone's actually watched enough of the video to get to the end, to hear that comment, to actually <laughs> insult me in the comments, which is fine, you're, you're allowed to, but I really think it could be the next WordPress. I really do. It is obviously really difficult to learn. There's a learning curve and learning N8N is making it even more difficult, but it's really, really worth it. If you're an app builder or if you're an entrepreneur who likes building apps, I really feel like this is the tool for you. So I hope you like it and please comment if you want uh, answers to any questions or if you want to see anything else in specific in particular. And please um, join the, the Open Noodle Discord I'm always hanging out in there. I'm always happy to answer questions. So I really look forward to seeing you there. And I hope you're going to be a member, if not already, of the Open Noodle community very soon. So take care and see you soon.